that thing? Nicaea's up and running again? And that monster at the Sky Tower looked a lot like a Septentrion. Thanks to you, Ben. Our users will find out about more Japanese games <laughs> that would otherwise just go right underneath the bridge. And so we were just chatting right before Ian pressed record on that machine over there. Mm -hmm. We were talking about how this is a, a re-release of a DS game. Yeah. And now that it's, it's coming back, uh, a, it somehow affiliated with Shimigami Tensei somewhere in this uh, bizarre franchise. Yeah. Um, is this a game you were anticipating or maybe something you were curious to check out? Did you play it on the DS originally? I did. Um... So, uh, I was getting into, after I played Persona 3 and 4, I was kind of all in on Shin Megami Tensei. If it said the Shin Megami Tensei name on it, I would play it. And so I went out and I bought all the games and I played a bunch of them and I fell in love. And uh, Devil Survivor was a game that I came out on DS originally as well. And I played that and played for a little while and then kind of put it back on the shelf, got distracted with other things. Then the re-release on 3DS came out very early on in the... Uh, Overclocked is what it was called. Uh, very early on in the early 3DS's uh, life cycle. I played that. I am not joking. I think Devil Survivor 1 might be one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, I, I get obsessed with games on a daily basis, but <laughs> that game sucked me into a black hole that I will... I don't know if I can ever relive. Like, just... For a week, I was playing it like 10 hours a day. I was so into it. I was so into the characters. It was really, really challenging, but I felt like uh, with all of the, the demon fusing and the creativity that I had to use and the text that I had to use in battle, I, I felt like it was fair, and I loved it. Uh, right around the time I finished it, I discovered that Devil Survivor 2 was out on the original DS. Um, I played it, and <clears throat> having done everything in Devil Survivor 1, it was, it was brutal. It was one of my like proudest game accomplishments. It was so difficult. And then playing Devil Survivor 2, I liked it. Uh, it had many of the same qualities, but it was even harder. And having just been obsessed with the first one, I just couldn't do it. I just was like, I need to, I was dying a lot. I was like, I'm getting frustrated. I need to take a break. And much like the first game, put it back on the shelf and never returned to it. Now, there's a second chance. Oh, so how long breaker. is that break? That's like a six-year break? How much uh, let's see. I was playing it in earnest in... 2012, I think, oh, so okay. like a three-year break. Three-year break, all right. Yeah, yeah. Um, and much like Overclocked, uh, this is definitely the definitive version of this game, so it adds voice acting for almost all of the lines. Which was not there. Which was wow, not in the DS That's original. a heck of a thing to add. It is, it is a big thing to add. Uh, and the other... Th this seems like a smarter re-release than Overclocked was. Um, and having played more of Devil Survivor 2 initially, I think I can appreciate those changes a little bit more than I did with Devil Survivor 1. Uh, there's, there's adjustable difficulty that you can switch between at any time. And so it's not just me. Devil Survivor 2 is kind of a notoriously difficult game. A lot of Shin Megami Tensei games can be pretty difficult. Uh, they're certainly more difficult than some of the more popular JRPGs out there. Uh, so having this option, I don't think it makes it too easy. It just it just makes it manageable. So if you don't mm. if you don't have a lot of time and you want to get into it, uh, I like that. I'm always a big fan of adjustable difficulty. I hate being locked into something. I you know let me let me change on the fly uh, when I want to. But for people that played the original game, I think the most important thing is there is a whole new chapter, a whole new part of the game. So basically, the events wrap up in the first game, and then you continue on in a new adventure. And what's cool is, is this isn't like some little DLC thing that's a couple of hours long. This is about half as long as the main game. And the main game is exceptionally long. I mean, it's, it's a typical RPG length. Uh, so getting like half of that in there uh, is pretty cool. So this sounds like, the adjustable difficulty makes sense because it sounds like they want to make this they want everybody to come and play this game if you missed it. You yeah. Know? So, like, if you have people coming in that like these games that don't like the difficulty, they can do it. If you have people that, you know, in, enjoy other Shin Megami Tensei games and play this, and like you said, like, you know, might come at a difficult point, and they're like, I, ju I just don't have the time for this. You know, like, right. if I really w was committed to this game when it came out, you know, and really wanted to appreciate it with other people that were playing it for the first time, maybe I would, you know, attack this full force and try to get past this difficult section. But, like, I don't ha necessarily have that much time, so I'll just... I'll drop it down from this one a little bit and then maybe right. bring it up later. I'm assuming that affects experience and everything in uh, terms of difficulty. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Oh, hey. So it's just... It's just, it's just pride. The board. Yeah, it's just pride. <laughs> um, but with, with Overclocked, there was... The way the original Devil Survivor worked is it took place over seven days. 
And in Overclock, the 3DS version, there was an eighth day. But to get to that eighth day, if you'd played the original game, you had to do it all over again. What's nice about Record Breaker is you can play the new story immediately. You can just select it from a menu. Cool. And there are multiple save slots, so if you kind of want to do both at once, you can, uh, which is super, super, super nice. So yeah, it sounds really accessible. And again, yeah. that's, that's something I think is really smart for a game that you're bringing back to light. Right. Um, and you said it's, it is available today, today being Tuesday the 5th. Yeah, it's available today. And yeah, so two things. When, when we say accessible, it definitely is more accessible, but Talking about Shin Megami Tensei, accessible for that series right. is like still pretty hard uh, for everything else. So it's it's not. I don't think it it dumbs it down, you know, in a way. Uh, and the other thing is, is I feel like both Devil Survivor games, kind of being on uh, handheld devices, have have been a bit overshadowed by by some of the bigger Shin Megami Tensei names, particularly Persona. Mm -hmm. And I is no secret that I am a rabid. <laughs> Persona fan, uh, you know, everybody at work can attest to that. I think I hold Devil Survivor 1 and hopefully Devil Survivor 2, I'm going to keep playing it, uh, in the same esteem. Like, they're that good. I, I got attached to those characters in that world just as much. And it's, it's also a lot darker uh, than the Persona games, which I like a lot. So you've just sampled a little <clears throat> bit of this game. Obviously, yeah. you know, this is a big game to go through, so you have right. yet to finish this right. game. Uh, before we sat down to have this conversation, I don't believe you're planning to review this game. Uh, so I don't want to, like set myself up for failure, but, you know, Pills of Eternity is just about out the door, right. finally. Uh, Blood's reviewing The Witcher 3, so so maybe if I can find, like, a nice pocket, I would I would like to sink in and, and try to try to view it. It's a game, like, you know, I, I get like this sometimes. It's a game that more people need to hear about, I think. Okay. So. Um, well, hopefully we've helped you in your mission of yeah. getting this game out. Yeah. Hopefully this tides you over before you can wait for Persona 5. Yeah. One final question before you, before we uh -oh. wrap up. No, I won't play it. No, no, yeah, you probably <laughs> won't play it, but uh, you should play, you should play one Shin Megami Tensei game, or at least, like, give it an earnest try, maybe when Persona 5 comes out. Is there, like, a, some psychological test you can take, or something like that, that might pick, like, this is your perfect Shin Megami Tensei game? Uh... You can just ask me questions, and I'll, I'll try okay. to be. I'll try to be your. Okay, your we can talk about different that, styles and stuff yeah, like that. Um, yeah. I like you. You mentioned adjustable difficulty, and that reminded me a little bit of uh, Bravely Default. I like the way that they had yeah. set that up. Yeah. Uh, on 3DS, that was a very fun portable RPG. Yeah. So uh, okay. Okay. Well, maybe I'll go through the catalog. Yeah. Maybe uh, there's a lot of them though. Well, right? you know, and the other thing is, is uh, there isn't really a lot on 3DS right now. Like I'm not. I'm not trying to be insulting. It just. Right. I feel like. I am not picking right up now. my... Right like right this moment, right, right this week, right. right this month. Right, yeah, yeah right, right in this period of time, there yeah. isn't that much. I mean, Etri and Mystery Dungeon came out, but I don't think a lot of people are, are jamming on that. So, you know, if you like JRPGs, I, I promise you my sincerest, truest recommendation, I don't think uh, Devil Survivor 2 will let you down. So. Thank you, Benmore. Thank you, Brandon Jones. You will likely find yourself tasked with such a decision one day. When that time comes, please, don't let me down. Thank you.